abandoned storage building behind Wendy's. This is the Poor Taste Podcast with Dustin Sims. Is it comedy or is he just working some shit out? Stay tuned and find out. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 23, I think, of the Poor Taste Podcast. The fucking boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. Got fucking gay Keith Richards over here. (laughs) I was thinking more Keith like Keith Urban. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like a queer Keith Urban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was Keith Richards gay? I don't know. I could have probably just said Keith Richards. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you probably could. I don't know anything about him. I just know that's kind of like his style you got going on. What? Does he wear wigs, too? I don't know. I think his hair is just like that. (laughs) <laughs> oh ball he, 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 he lack thereof he does that no 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 <laughs> no the, the, the shit yeah it's good i think it was no, good i mean style. like my kids thought that was really your hair when you wore it to the house yeah 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 it was just strange they thought that you just chose not to have hair all this time and now you wanted this style let me tell you every like every woman that i talked to right mm-hmm. like that's what they think they think that i'm bald like by choice right, <laughs> right yeah <laughs> and and let me tell you that's not the case. That is not the case. Like, if I could grow hair, I would love to have a full head of hair. I thought you were going to say every woman you talk to has that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. Sometimes. You're right. You know, I like them, bitchy. Uh, <laughs> it's good to be back. I know people have been, every show I've done, at least two or three people come up and like, where's the fucking podcast? I'm like, bitch, I'm here right now in this city. That's <laughs> This is when we film is on the weekends. I haven't been able to film because of doing the shows and shit. I appreciate everybody who's been coming out. Like The shows have been going great. Some of them. Some of them have been fucking nightmares, okay? Uh, but I want to give an update real quick on the Memphis show because it's this week. Um, at first, I said we canceled it because of the COVID restrictions, but they're working with me. The venue's been great. They're like, look, we don't want to do the shit either. It's just a mandate, but we have another location down the street that we can do it and wash our hands of it. It never happened. So it's going to be moved to <laughs> Hernando's. I'm going to post some more information about it on Facebook, Instagram, but they're going to send out emails. You'll figure all that shit out. So there's still a few tickets left of the late show. The first one's sold out. DustinSimsTickets.com. Terry Halt, Indiana, for this Thursday has been rescheduled to next year. Whatever. Don't know why. I just got to do what they tell me. Okay? Uh, I'll be in Louisville Friday. There's still a few tickets left of that. Anyways. So any, all the show schedules, I don't have many more left. You can look at DustinSimsTickets.com. The whole shit's on there. You don't want to hear about this shit right now, but Listen. I want to talk about Asheville really quick. All Get right. this off my fucking right. chest. Let's let's hear it. I had a show in Asheville a couple weeks ago, and I wasn't going to do I canceled the Durham show because they were requiring vaccination. They got to have proof of vaccination. There was no other way to get in. And I was like, I'm not even vaccinated, so fuck you. I'm not doing it. Canceled the show. Now, Asheville and Richmond had the same thing. I was like, I'm not going to do it. And they were like, well, you can bring a negative test. And they were like, you can get it from CVS. You can get it from Walgreens. They made it sound like they would be very lenient. And I sold a lot of tickets to Asheville, so I was like, let's do it. You know, I was like, we'll give it a shot. So we get to, the Richmond one kind of went shitty, but like the staff and everybody was cool. They handled it well. They were like, look, we don't want to do this. This is just what we have to do. And it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, but I could tell that it was just as painful for them as it was for me. Not the case in Asheville. It was like they were proud to be turning people away at the door who (laughs) drove hours. I sold like over 200 tickets. They were turning people away at the door who had drove hours. They had CVS uh, uh, tests, Walgreens tests, and they're like, no, nah, these are no good. And so, like, I'm livid, all right? I'm fucking pissed because people are messaging me, and it looks like it's me. And I'm like, it's not me. It's this venue. The people were, like, just dicks about everything, you know? So we're all in the green room talking shit about the regulations because, like, only 36 people were able to get in out of, like, 36. over 200. Yes. Yeah. I'm pissed. So we're in the green room talking about how fucked up the regulations are. We weren't talking about any specific people. We weren't talking about the venue. Well, all of a sudden, this dude sticks his head in the door. He comes in. Paul. His name's Paul. (laughs) All right? And he comes up in the door in the green room, and he's like, hey, are you guys good in here? And I think he's checking on us because that's what they do when they come into the green room. And I'm like, yeah, man, we're good. I'm like, his genitals are a little fucked up, like just talking shit. And... He was like, hey, cool, whatever, love the energy in here. I just want you to know I can hear every fucking thing you're saying. And then he, like, slams the door on all of us, all right? So 
I'm pissed, right? Right. A grown man yeah, slams absolutely. the door on us after just yelling at us. I'm pissed. I get up. I'm assuming he slams the door and then just sprints because I open up the door. <laughs> He's gone like a fucking magician, okay? David Copperfield. <laughs> so, like, the 36 people who made it to the show are looking at me. they seen the dude slam the door and run. So I look at them. I'm like, hey, where did he go? And they're like, back there. So they point at this door. I go. I try to get in the door. He's got the door locked. I'm like, open it up. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You know, just open the fucking door. I know you're in there. Like, Jesus Christ, what are we doing? He wouldn't come out and talk to me. So I'm pissed. I go in the back. The manager, she comes back. She was really nice. The manager was really nice. Yeah. She's like, I'm so sorry. She's like, he's a hothead. I'm going to handle it. I was like, no, I want to talk to him. And she's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to handle it. I'm going to handle it. I was like, that's fine. I'd still like to talk to him. And she was like, well, it's okay. I was like, it's not. I would rather him come talk to us or something. So he comes in and he gives us this bullshit apology. And he's like, everybody's just real stressed out right now. I'm like, oh, you're stressed out? <laughs> what about the 170 people who got got turned away at the door? I think they're pretty fucking stressed out too, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I was like, but are you good? I was like, what's going on? And he wouldn't say nothing. I was like, are you good? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, cool. So I stick my hand out and shake his hand. I'm like, all right, we're good then. And he looks at my hand. He's like, just make sure you're wearing your mask. And then turns around and walks off. And I look at the manager. I'm like, eh, I'm fucking pissed again. Okay, <laughs> I'm fucking <laughs> yeah. not good. So I was like, after the show, I'd like to have a talk with him. She's like, no, 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 it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go talk to him again. I said, like, what the fuck is this going on? So I'm pissed. I'm thinking about just leaving and canceling the show. But I'm like, these people who made it in, they had to go through fucking hell to get in. I was like, the fucking Hunger Games to get inside. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> it's not their fault. I got to give them a show. So we go do the show for like 36 people. I'm still pissed, but we do the show. Uh, the show went great. The crowd that showed up was great. Uh, but at the end of the show, like I always do, I said, hey, make sure you tip your wait staff. They've been working hard for you tonight. Right. I said, I know the situation sucks, but it's not their fault. I said, the manager here, she's a sweetheart. It's not her fault. Don't be mad at her. Don't really give her no fret. I said, but there's one pussy motherfucker in here that I would love to get my hands on, which I don't really think is that fucked up thing to say. You know what I'm no, saying? No, no, no. That's definitely not. You know? And really, I said it in a joking way in the crowd because the crowd saw the dude slam the door. So they all laughed. Whatever. We do the merch and shit. The lady brings me like the settlement. We leave. Everything's fine. I get a fucking email the next day. <laughs> I'm going to read the email. <laughs> this is the fucking greatest thing ever. I'm going to put it on a t-shirt probably and sell it. This is fucking... Oh, you definitely need to put it on a t-shirt. So this is to my agent. Hey, Michael, I just want to let you know that Dustin Sims is never welcomed at the Gray Eagle again, and I'll do my part to make sure every venue in town knows what to expect if they are considering booking him. You should probably have a talk with him how he and, how he and his crew handle themselves on the road if he's hoping to continue playing reputable rooms. The Gray Eagle is not very reputable, okay? <laughs> Been in way better rooms. Uh, I wasn't there for the show, but we're speaking on it. Cool. Personally, but the reports I got from half the staff afterwards were – absolutely horrible we aren't accustomed to this kind of behavior or lack of professionalism and he's lucky that no one was harmed or threatened more seriously wow. 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 in addition to the phone calls i received from upstate staff members over the past two days male and female see the below text i got from russ the owner of the gray eagle several members of dustin sims team threatened to kick my staff's ass on sunday <laughs> night <laughs> over the county-wide mass mandate that we have to enforce it wasn't about the mass mandate Staff was also threatened and harassed multiple times, and we had to escort them out and lock the door behind them. Not true. No one escorted us out. Multiple staff. No one was threatened but Paul. Dustin told the crowd he wanted to beat Paul's ass. Paul was one of the cooks, and one of the other comedians on the bill asked him if he wanted to throw down. <laughs> <laughs> that was my buddy Josh. He's not a comedian. He did do that, but he was drunk. <laughs> He apparently waited on Paul in the parking lot after the show. Not true. But all luckily, all the staff walked out together, so nothing happened. We could have took the entire staff if we wanted to, okay? They were just like, all of them had like fucking green hair and like fairy dust on their face. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. But what I'm saying is none of that happened. And like, what's fucked up is when the man come into the green room over, after eavesdropping on our private conversation, I could have had his job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, I didn't want absolutely. a man to get fired. I just wanted to talk to the man man to man. But this is why I guess sometimes you've got to get somebody's fucking job because then it's their word against yours. So then all these fucking motherfuckers just collaborate this bullshit story and send it to my agent who thought it was hilarious because you can, I've been in all these rooms in the entire country. No one's ever had an issue with me. That should make you wonder what the fuck's going on in your place. But it's fine, dude. Fuck the Gray Eagle in Asheville. Hope the place burns down. Uh, I would say something about it on Facebook, but I'm banned right now because I said made a joke about stabbing a guy, <laughs> and like 
I'm learning that you just got to stab them, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Don't talk about it on Facebook. Not that you ain't got to say it. You just got to stab them. Just stab them. Just stab them? Okay. Don't say it. Yeah, don't say it. Whatever you do, no mean tweets, don't say it. Don't joke about stabbing somebody. Just stab them. And now we're off YouTube. (laughs) Possibly. But anyways. um, Dude, we had... Okay. We had fights in South Carolina. Yes. That wasn't as bad. No. As, People as, were as fighting. The, yes. Physically fighting. In pajamas. Physically fighting. In pajamas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This bitch had Elmo. No, was it Cookie Monster? It was either one. What I can't remember. A fucking Elmo fucking pajama bottoms and no shoes. Just come into the kitchen <laughs> and just starts beating this bitch's ass in front of me and Mike. And me and Mike's like, whoa, did we stop this? And they were cool afterwards. I mean, the bitch got fired, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. Like, and then, like, these motherfuckers in Asheville are like, whatever. We, fuck these pussies, man. Yeah. This is a bunch of pussies. I had a show in Atlanta last night. It went okay. Uh, it was kind of in the ghetto. People were really worried about it. It's funny because it was like bring your own beer event. And I made a joke. I was like, yeah, y'all thought the beer was for you. It's like to throw it at the homeless people to get them off of you. And, like, <laughs> and, like a lot of people, like, there was like, 20 or 30 people that bought tickets that didn't even show up. And I was like, they got stabbed under the overpass outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like definitely. a fucking FEMA camp out there, dude. <laughs> it was really fucked up. But it was funny. Like, I was doing the merch, and this guy comes up, and he's got a fucking blunt in his mouth. And I'm like, damn, bro. Bro, like, he's got a blunt in it his is mouth? Ma- yeah, yeah. In the venue. Like, like dude, we're selling Whoa, the merch. I'm like, is that a blunt? Fuck. He's like, yeah. What's it look like? I'm like, ah. He said, BYOB, bring your own blunt. I'm like, hmm, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess so. I guess you're right. And I was like, you got another one? And he said, hell yeah. So he pulls out this blunt, and he sticks it in my pocket. And I'm like, cool. I was like, I guess I got to give you a T-shirt now, right? So listen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I give the man a T-shirt. He leaves, okay? This next guy sees this exchange go down. He comes up. He's like, you want a peanut butter cup? And I was like, what? He said, I brought you a peanut butter cup. (laughs) Whoa. No, hold on. Whoa. (laughs) Now, I've had people bring me, like, edibles before. So, I'm, right. he pulls out this purple packet, and I can't see the front of it. And I'm thinking, like, this is just one of them edibles, you know, like you get from, like, the, dis- you know, dispensary. Right. Thing. And I was like, oh, bet. And I, he gives it to me, and I, like, just stick it in my pocket. He's like, I think it's melted. I was like, it's fine, dude, whatever. But I think he wanted a T-shirt. But I'm like, giving you a T-shirt for a fucking peanut butter cup. But I really thought it was an edible. So, like, he leaves, and the dude's, like, looking back at him. He's like, enjoy that peanut butter cup. And the way he's talking about it, I think it's probably, like, it's like 200 milligram fucking edible. Yeah. So, everybody leaves and shit, and uh, Alex is like, what did that dude give you? I said, give me a blunt. He's like, no, the other guy. I said, oh, man, he gave me this edible. I pulled out, and it's straight up just a recent cup. <laughs> <laughs> wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. It's a melted recent cup. So, bro walked in. <laughs> Let me get this straight. So, bro, go, bro walked in yeah. with, like, maybe a king's, like... No, like, no, maybe it was a, a pumpkin. King's. It was a Halloween. And, like, I don't even think those are out yet. So, it's probably like, from last year. He's got the limited edition. <laughs> limited he has a limited edition, edition <laughs> fucking Reese's Cup. He's like, you know what? I bet Dustin will like this. He can Yeah. And, like, he was really proud of it. And he's, like, enjoy that Reese's Cup. And I'm like, and he didn't call it Reese. He called it a peanut butter cup, which has made me more think more that it's like a fucking edible. Yeah, right. But it's so funny. Like, he, he was giving it to me, like, in the sense, like, he thought, like, I was just going to give him some merch for that. And I was like, we're not doing that. Not for a peanut butter cup, bro. No. Come on, man. And then it was really just a peanut butter cup. And I'm like, uh, what are we no, doing? It, it didn't even get me high? No. Come on, bro. And it was melted. <laughs> oh, it didn't even no, like a pumpkin no, no, in it. No. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Is it was it like melted? Like peanut butter stayed the same, you know? Peanut butter still in the cylinder? No, it like a mud puddle. <laughs> the shit was stuck to the wrapper. Nah, bro. Hey, you ain't getting a shirt. And for then that like big Cam's, I love Cam Dip. He's like a pussy, you know. And Cam's like, "Are you taking drugs from strangers?" <laughs> and I was like, "What?" He's like, "You gonna smoke that blunt?" And I was like, "Yeah, when I get home." Yeah. At the safety of my own home, and he was like, "Stale. What if it's laced with something?" And I was like, "What are you talking about?" What? I was like, "I know this guy likes me a little bit. He paid to come see my show." I was right. like, "I asked him for the blunt. He wasn't shoving it in. He's like, here, take this. You know, I asked him for it. 
he had it for himself, and he's like, still, I don't take drugs from strangers. Says, don't all drugs come from strangers for the most part? Like, let's be honest. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's let's dive. Uh, uh, I don't know that I can say this. Wasn't Cam. So Cam was a gangster back in the day, right? Yeah. So why is he worried about this fucking peanut butter cup? I don't, no, he wasn't worried. He's worried about the blunt. He was worried about the blunt. But still. But he's like, you don't take drugs from strangers. He's like, don't all drugs come from strangers? Because I... Yeah. You, the motherfucker you buy the shit from at the gas, and this fucking dude in this shady-ass Impala, I don't know that motherfucker. I'm not hanging out with his family and shit. I don't know his past. Right, <laughs> right. because I'm giving him money for it. I'm supposed to be like, this is great. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. But it's whatever. That reminds me of, like, the thing I seen on Facebook. It was, like, Halloween. All right, so you remember. I know you remember this. Halloween, you know, there was like, oh, you got to like watch out for your kids. They might give you some like THC gummies or something like that. Nobody, is giving nobody it is giving that out. No. I promise you. No. Nobody is giving that out. No. It's just motherfuckers who's never done. Like, you know, it's just whatever. It's just bitches, dude. But I got a... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. It's just this is a funny story to tell, and I, <laughs> this is a shit I, show, should, I shouldn't really say this, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Whatever. I got a quarter while we were in Asheville, and I forgot that we flew there. A quarter of weed, right? Yeah, and I yeah. forgot that we flew there, and me and uh, we all got a cabin together, right? And, like nobody wanted to smoke except for me. All right, so I have this quarter of weed for two days, and I like I realized on the second day, I like I can't fly home with this. I was like, man. I was like, I don't want to throw all this away. <laughs> so I'm going to smoke as much of it as I can. Right. So I'm sitting on the porch at this cabin. I'm just... <laughs> I mean, a lot. I mean, just... As much as you can put and down. And it was really, really, really loud. Okay? And it gets to the point that, like, you, you just get to the point where you don't know where you are. And then you get past that to a point where you don't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm out there on the porch, and I'm like, oh, we. My buddy Josh is out there. He's just like, keep going. Keep going. He's just like, yeah, just do it. Wait, he was like, hit yeah. more? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's just hey, like, keep going. If you ain't feeling like yourself, yeah. just hit some more. He's just like, keep going. I'm like, cool. <laughs> cool. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. And there was a spider web, like, on the, the thing. And, like, I, I can remember I was just, like, looking up there, and I'm like, is this fucking Charlotte? You know? <laughs> And I'm fucked up. And like, this cabin was like, the pa- the walls are like paper thin. And me and Kayla stayed on the bottom floor. Everybody was up on top floor. Cam's room was right above ours. And like, literally, there's cracks in the floor. Like, you can see up in You like, see the light. Yeah, yeah. You can see his like, if he had his lamp on in his room, you could see the light coming through. No shit. Yeah, like, he, he could like, if he wanted to, he could like just peep down and look at us through the fucking floor. And so like, <laughs> I'm high as shit. And I'm just laying in bed looking at these cracks like I know he's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> all night, bro. Pitch black. I'm like... He's... Like he was watching you sleep. All night. Yeah. Like he was watching Tripping. you sleep. Tripping. Like, That's Dustin Sims Tri- down there Tripping, dude. <laughs> and like what's so fucked up is the AC was messed up in this cabin. So like I sleep naked anyways. But like I'm on top of the sheets. I'm like butt naked on top of the sheets. And I'm just yeah. butt naked down there with my socks on just... Staring at the ceiling, <laughs> like just watching. I'm like, damn. Even if he is looking, he's scared for his life. <laughs> you know, if he did peek now, he's just gonna see damn, me you down here like that, bro. My baby dick. What? No, bro. Oh, like you, you whipping out the like the the elephant trunk out here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you got this fucking. He was bro, like, God damn! No. I don't need to let my old lady around him. What are you talking about? It's just like it's sitting on my sack. <laughs> It's just laying on my ball sack like it's on a bean bag. It's like a little hamster sitting on a bean bag. <laughs> so, oh my god, dude! But it was funny. Is like I smoked as much as I could, and then I, there's still so much left. Yeah. So I wake up the next morning, I'm like fuck, I gotta throw all this away. But I had bought this pipe too, and I bought this grinder, and I had this lighter. I'm like, I can't take none of this on the fucking airplane. So I like stuff it all in this brown paper sack, and we're going down the road on this highway, and I just 
yeeted it out. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> some homeless man hit the fucking lottery. Oh, out there. bro, could you imagine? All right. So could you imagine? You know, you don't have no you don't have no home. You don't have no roof over your head. All you got is maybe a little shack, mm-hmm. right? That you made. That yeah, that you made out of tarps and wood and whatever you could fashion. Yeah, whatever you could get from the fucking woods. Yeah. And you walk up on <laughs> fucking almost a quarter a week. A it quarter? Whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, you walk up on a quarter of weed. Almost. I mean, it wasn't obviously a full, but it was just like it. It was. But still, like. And then you have a grinder, and you have a pipe, and you have a lighter, and you're just like, "Holy shit! God damn! I hit the fucking jackpot!" Yes. Like, I mean, I know it ain't meth, but like, it'll do, right? You could trade. It. <laughs> yeah. You could trade it. Uh. <laughs> we went to fucking yeah, we went to Gatlinburg with my in laws this past weekend. How was that? It was fun. Like we had a good time. The kids like it, you know. I I get tired. Like, it sounds like uh, okay, I'm trying to say this sounds like I get tired of traveling. I like doing the shows yeah. and I like like going to these places, but it's like fuck dude, I get tired of the fucking airports. I get tired of like you, you wake up, you fly to a fucking city, you barely get to see it, you do a show, and then you got to drive six hours to the next city the next morning. Then you got to drive six hours to the next city, and then you got to wake up at four in the morning, go to the fucking airport, fly back home, wake up in the morning, take the kids to school because you want to be a functional parent. Right. Get out of school, go to this, these practices, and you're fucking dog tired. It sounds like something, like, and it's a great, it's fun to do, but it's like, it fucking gets exhausted. But we traveled up, we drove up to Gatlinburg for the weekend with the in-laws, and we got this cabin together and shit. And it's like, have you ever, like, went somewhere with, like, your old lady's family, like, on a vacation? Yep. Uh, have you ever had, like, you, you try to have sex, and you're all staying in the same yep. place? Yep. And it's like In the bathroom, actually. Yeah, well, yeah, where, <laughs> wherever you can. But, like, it doesn't matter where you do it. It's like, I mean, if you're respectful to your, you know, it's like you do the Anne Frank sex, you know what I'm saying? You're not in there just like, <laughs> you know, you know, then they're just. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you're, you're like... You're not in there, like, beating it down. No. And so, like, you're in there, like, you're in it, but you're, like, you're not really, like, throw, you're just kind of, like, like, one of them vibrating <laughs> chairs, like, you lock, and you got a whisper, you're like, you lock that. You fucking lock that, bitch. You're, like, in her fucking ear, you son of a, you fucking lock that shit. Bitch. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, you doing that shit all weekend. So, like, when you finally get to come home, it's just like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, hold the fuck on. Okay. So, I remember, and this is a joke, because I, I'm really just joking, because my in-laws are going to watch this. I'm just joking. This I is re- just comedy. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's not. But it's not. You know, it has a little truth behind it. Yeah. Anyways, I was uh, I was dating this girl, right? Yeah. And we stayed over at her grandparents' house. Yeah. And if y'all can picture this, picture I'm there, uh, bro. Picture uh, a man that's sitting about six seven. He's sitting about six seven. Maybe two hundred fifty pounds. Maybe 250 pounds. Big, big guy. Yeah. And my old lady, you know, she was ramped up, right? She wanted to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She wanted to do something. And she wanted it, she wanted it then and now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, women are different from, different from men. Way different from men. How? Like, whenever they're ready, like, women are like, uh, they're like a bottle rocket. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you know, there's sex drive. Like, yeah, 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 they're like then and now, shh, and then then they're done. Mm. They're done. Mm. Well, she wanted to do it then and now, and the only thing that we had available in this barn <laughs> was, oh well, yes, in this barn <laughs> was a four wheeler. That's okay. the only thing that we could possibly lay on. Okay. So we decided to like, you know, try out the four wheeler. Right. 
Went great. Everything went great. Afterwards, she got ramped up again, right? You know, I mean, maybe they get ramped up two or three times a day. I, if you don't I, finish I don't the job, know. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's probably just, what it was. Just, like, just, realistically, probably what it was. So, like, you know, I may have blasted off a little too early. <laughs> you bottle rocket yourself. Yeah, yeah. And then that's it. And she's like, I didn't get off. So I'm going to try and golf now. Yeah. Well, she, like, doubled down, right? Mm hmm. And she said, I want to try it in the grandparents' bed. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> this man. This man is six foot, goddamn, I don't know what. Yeah. Six foot big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best that I can explain it. Six foot big. Yeah. And all I remember is that I fucked his granddaughter in his, his bed. You just sick fuck. I know, right? Is he alive still? Yes, he is alive. And that would have been that would have been all okay, right? Yeah. Except for her mama was in there. N- Wait, well, I was she, well, nah, was I'm she in there recording? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She was like, "Yeah, you're doing it good, girl." Get it? Get it. <laughs> no, no, lie. No. That's not what happened. Uh, so we done we done our business. We got out, and later on, we were playing board games, and her mama decided to announce this. To the whole crowd. The whole fucking family. Aunts, uncles, grandma, grandpa, everybody there. Yeah. And they're like, hey, by the way, Mike and them had sex in your bed. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this six foot goddamn seven motherfucker. You know, he's nearly seven foot. Like, big son bitch. His hand was the size of my face. During the Monopoly game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, during like during some fucking board game, she was like, oh, yeah, you know, this reminds me of the time they had sex in your bed. What the fuck? Last night. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, she tried to, like, plug that in wherever she could. Yeah. And I'm looking at this man, and this man's looking at me like, I'm going to kill your ass. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah. What the fuck? Luckily enough for me, I decided to play a little football with him. He didn't He didn't fuck me up. He, he didn't fuck me up. Like, wait a minute. Like, on the PlayStation or something? Oh, no, no, no. We, we, no, bro. We went outside. With the with the grandpa? Yeah. God. All right. Did y'all tackle it? <laughs> bro. This is the most athletic grandpa I've ever seen in my fucking life. Okay. He's he's six seven, two hundred and plus pounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But not only that, like dude has hands as big as my face. Yeah, he's like the fucking Bowflex man, fifty, years, yeah. sixty years old, best shape of his life. Absolutely, dude's in the best shape of his life. Well, and I want to tell you, like, you know, he I ain't gonna lie, bro. He tackled me. A little too hard. He tackled me a little too hard. <laughs> I feel like he was kind of getting back at me. Like, they had this $4,000 Tempur-Pedic mattress, right? Yeah. And, you and, you know, you don't want, like, other people having sex in your mattress. You know, you don't want other people having sex in your bed. Yeah. But, like, the fact that he knew that, it's yeah. like he really decided to, like, put it on me. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was like, oh, yeah. I think you got off easy. Oh, yeah. Like, this dude could have, like, grabbed me in the face and, like, threw me down. Like, beat he the shit out. He could have fucked you in his bed. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, if this man, okay. It's luckily, luckily enough for me, he didn't like men. Yeah. Because if he did. He'd have fucked you. He'd have fucked me. <laughs> he'd, he'd have fucked me in that, that bed. On. He'd have been like, how's this tempur now, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, you talking about fucking in a barn? It made me think when we were in Indiana, we had to drive to Ohio and do a show, and like we were in the middle of nowhere, dude. 
I mean, like, it was one of those, you know, like, when you're on a road trip and you go through, like, 70 or 80 miles where there's no gas station or nothing. We're just passing, like, farms, just farms, 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 farms. All of a sudden, we see this huge barn, and on top of it, it has a sign that says, Live Nude Girls. And we're in the middle of <laughs> Whoa, whoa. Nowhere. Out in the middle of nowhere? A tiny, like, gravel parking lot in the front of it. And I, like, dude, I locked it down. I was like, <laughs> I'm joking. I was like, what the fuck? Is that? Yeah. And it's just like this big barn. It's just live nude girls. And I'm like, for sure it's against their will. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, Whoever's yeah. pursuing a like a career in stripping or whatever is not going here in the middle of fucking Indiana in the farmlands. Like, this is where I'm going to make my career. You right. know what I'm saying? And I was like... This is definitely against your wish. And then, like, on the, it's hilarious because on the door they had this big sign that said, Help wanted. It's like, No <laughs> shit. Help what? What? You burn it down? <laughs> what do you fucking need help with? I actually, actually, I have a story about that. Pull the mic. You got to talk to the mic. <laughs> I have a story about that, right? Yeah. So, when we. You got to talk to the mic. God damn. <laughs> where, was, where was we at? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. God damn, I don't even remember where was that. So, we got our four-year-old with us, right? Yeah. My yeah. four-year-old nephew. Oh, okay, there you go. My four-year-old nephew's with us. He's having a good time. He's having a ball. And we're like, hey, you want to go putt-putt? And he's like, hell yeah, I want to go. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I want to go putt-putt. Yeah. So, we go to putt-putt. Right beside this putt-putt is a gentleman's club. Nice. Like, they have a big banner. They have a big banner with a half-naked girl on it. That's the 18th hole. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, bro, you, you could go over here and, like, shoot 300 plus and then go over here and see some tits. <laughs> like, these people really have it figured out. It's marketing. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Leave the kids at the putt-butt and go over here and see some tits. Right. That's, that was this place. It was just a barn. It was like Cracker Barrel with titties. <laughs> it's, whoa. Well, who was your clientele? You're in the middle of nowhere. Whoa. Imagine Cracker Barrel actually having like Hooters waitresses. Yeah. That's, I mean, there's like. You get biscuits that have, and gravy in, but. Yeah. I mean, you bring the gravy. God damn. Yeah, you bring the gravy. <laughs> <laughs> That Jack's getting your ass, ain't it? Bro, I'm not going to lie. All right, so this Jack's 132 proof. proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Single barrel, gold yeah. label, baby. Single barrel, gold label. It's in really case, good. You know, in case you want to, you know. It's really good. Uh, what I'm saying about this is, though, like, I feel like all the women that work in that place, like, it's the middle of nowhere. Your clientele has got to be, like, Fentanyl Frank and fucking One-Eyed <laughs> Joe. Yeah. No one's really like applying for this job. Like they're forced to work there. I feel like there's definitely sex trafficking going on. Like, have we looked for Natalie Holloway there? Like, that's that's where she's going. Indiana. Be. Yeah, the bitch has been missing. They found her though. We're not gonna talk about that. That's too soon. Her. You got to pick. Go ahead. I'll be back. Okay. Uh, I'll talk about the how Hey Arnold eats pussy. Uh, all right, so you fucking left me. Um, I guess I'll tell you about this bitch that brought a gun in the courtroom. I was at the other day. I had to go to court. Um, I lost my license, and I got pulled over. Uh, I was going to shoot a podcast before I started doing it with Mike with this other guy. Um, he wasn't on the podcast when I was doing it by myself, but I had this dude like producing it or whatever. And he lives like forty five minutes away from me, and he wanted some weed. Okay. So, I had just bought an ounce, and I was taking it over there, right? And we was just going to split it up. So, I'm driving with that on me, and I drink on the podcast, so I had a bottle of Crown as well. So, I'm driving over there, and I speed everywhere I go. So, I'm flying. I'm going about 70 and a 45. I get pulled over, and I'm freaking the fuck out, okay? Like, this is after. This is on my way back from the podcast. I've been drinking. I have... 
an empty whiskey glass in my cup holder, a half a bottle of Crown in the floorboard, and like almost a full ounce of weed in the floorboard. So I'm like, fuck. I'm getting pulled over. I'm freaking out. I'm like, all right. I know my breath smells like alcohol. Well, I got a box of uh, the uh, Icebreaker's Mints right here in the thing. So I'm like, hell yeah. I open it up. I throw like fucking 40 of them in my mouth. I'm chewing them up. My teeth, I swear to God, they're like Chip Skylark from Fairly Odd Parents by the time the cop got up there. Just, like, just shining, okay? Uh, the cop comes up, and he's like, do you know why I pulled you over? I'm like, speeding! You know, I'm like, fuck, give me the ticket. Like, whatever, just get out of here. And he's like, yeah, you're going 70 and a 45. I was like, ah, damn it. Ah, man. Now, I didn't know that my license was suspended at the time. So, like, the cop comes back, and he's like, hey, brother, your license is suspended. And I was like, what the fuck? Get out of here. <laughs> you know? I'm like, now they're going to search this car when they tow it. And I'm going to get all kinds of charges. So I was like, fuck, man, I didn't know. And he's like, I can tell you didn't know by your reaction. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, so what we're going to do is I'm going to write you a ticket for driving with suspended license. Figure out why it's suspended. Uh, I'm going to write you a speeding ticket. He's like, go to court. And maybe they can work it out. And I'm like, that's perfect. Let's do that. You know, white privilege. So <laughs> I, I get the tickets. I go to court. I get there. I dress nice. I've been to a lot of court dates. I've been to court dates where I've gone to jail. I know that you should dress nice. I dress nice. I get to this court, and it's in Raglan, Alabama. I am by far. I have a polo shirt on and, like, jeans, but it's tucked in. I walk in. Everyone else is in, like, fucking pajamas. Okay, yeah, like I'm pretty sure a dude's shooting fucking heroin over here in the corner, and I'm like, wow. And we're all in fold up chairs. We're not in pews. the The judge is sitting at like a picnic table, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And like people are texting on their phones, and no one's saying nothing to them. I'm like, damn, this is like no court I've ever been to. So I sit down. I'm like, whatever. I get up there, and the judge is like, ooh, speeding. I'm like, yeah. He said, driving with suspended license. I'm like, yeah. He said, what's up with that? I was like, I didn't know they were suspended. He's like, when do you get them back? And this was in November of last year. And I was like, I, I called. I was like, I don't get them back until like December 16th. And he's like, come back December 17th. And I was like, what? He said, yeah, I'm going to give you a new court date, December 17th. Bring your license. We'll make this one disappear. And I'm like, no shit. And he's like, yeah. He said, then just pay the speed. And you cool with that? I'm like, yeah. Sounds amazing. <laughs> so he gives me the court date. I get my license back December 16th. My dumb ass thinks my court date is December 19th. Okay. So I miss my court date on the 17th. Uh, wait. Yeah. So I call up there. I'm like, hey, I missed my court date. And they're like, well, you can't come back till January the 11th. I'm like, whatever. I go back. I know that I'm not getting out of it now. I'm like, I'm going to have to pay this fucking ticket. I walk in. I hold this door open for this little old lady. Little old lady. Probably in her 50s. Late 50s, early 60s. I sit down. I'm like, fuck, this is going to suck, you know. Well, I'm sitting here. This little old lady, she gets called up there to the front. She's talking to the judge. And all of a sudden, the, the bailiff starts shouting at her. He's like, put your hands up. Put your hands up. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I'm like trying to get in the floor. I think somebody's done come in about to kill us all. <laughs> so I'm like, ooh, wee. you know, I'm like trying to get all my extremities below this, you know, to a low point. Uh, and then I look up and he's yelling at this lady and she's like, what's going on? What's going on? And he's like, put your hands up. So she puts her hands up. He's like, is there a gun in that bag? And she's like, yeah. He said, like, I knew it. Slide it down here. So she like pushes her purse down the table. This dude starts going through her purse. She pulls out this. He pulls out this Glock. Now I'm assuming she just carries a gun in her purse, like most people in the South, and whatever. She just forgot it. And so he's like unloading it. He's pulling everything out, you know. And uh, he's like, "Have a seat over there." And she's like, "Listen." She's like, "I can explain this." He's like, "You'll have a chance to in a minute. Go sit over there." <laughs> well, like he calls for like backup. And I'm like, damn, this is fucking crazy, you know? Like, what the fuck? So, like, I'm just sitting here like, this is wild, you know? Well, like, she goes to, like, the third row back, and she's, like, pulls her phone out like she's calling somebody. And all of a sudden, she just goes, like, dips. Like, like, like it's fucking Scooby-Doo. Like, she runs like Scooby-Doo. Like, her fucking legs are moving on the floor first, and she's like, <laughs> gone. Out the double door, sprints, and the cop jumps up, and he's like, 
looking at the judge. He's like, I can't leave you. I can't leave you. Like he's fucking saving Private Ryan or something. I'm like, she's the one that brought the gun in here. Go figure out where this bitch. She got another in the car. I'm like, what are we about? Are we about to die? And like everybody's just sitting there. I'm like, what the fuck? So he's like calling for backup. He's like, y'all got to get up here, bitch. Them brought a gun in here. She's out there on the run. I'm like, oh, my God. Well, then all of a sudden, it's like fucking Grand Theft Auto. Everybody just forgets that that just happened. Everybody just goes back to their normal lives. And they're like, Mr. Sams. And I was the next to go up there. How do you follow? Now, like, in comedy, you don't want to follow somebody that just murdered the room. I had to follow this bitch who probably had intentions of really murdering the room. How do you come up to the judge (laughs) after someone with a fucking gun? How do you follow that? This motherfucker's pissed off now for sure. And she got away. So I'm like, fuck. So I get up there, and I'm like, hey, I'm Dustin, you know. And they're like, "Uh, you got a failure to appear. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I had to come up here and pay my $500 bond so I wouldn't get arrested. So I went and drove to Tampa because I didn't want to get pulled over with a warrant. And he's like, yeah. I was like, so I'm just letting you know I was being proactive. And he's like, that's cool. He's like, but you missed the court date. He's like, you did pay the bond. He's like, but you were driving with a suspended license. He said, did you get the license back? I'm like, yeah. He said, but you missed the court date. And I'm like, yeah, I missed the court date. I said, but I didn't bring a gun in here. And (laughs) and he was like. Didn't think it was funny. Bailiff didn't think it was funny. Lady over here, like, tapping on the thing. She thought it was funny. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, someone's got a sense of humor. And I was like, so can we work something out, you know? And he's like, um, yeah, you can pay the speeding ticket and you can pay the ticket for driving suspended license. And I was like, okay. How much is that going to be? He's like, $949. And I was like, oh, I should have brought the gun in here. <laughs> Nobody yeah. laughs. <laughs> yeah, okay. But I, was, I didn't give a fuck because I had to pay the $940. So then I have to go over here and talk to this motherfucker. Oh, I don't even know what the fuck he does. He's over here like, Mr. Sims, this is your paperwork and shit. Blah, 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 blah. And he's talking to me. The cops come in and they're like looking for the bitch. Now I get the rest of the story. This bitch had just robbed a gas station four miles down the road. Okay. On the way there. On gunpoint. Yeah. At gunpoint. Robbed this gas station. Okay. Left the gas station. Came to court. Her court date. <laughs> I held the door for this bitch. How? <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, she's like, I can, I got somewhere to be. <laughs> you know, like she's sitting here at this gas, gas station. station. No, Where no, you she's in be? the gas station robbing them. Like, put the money in the bag. I got to be at court in 30 minutes. And like, she goes to court. She went to court. And she looks like a sweet old lady. She just robbed this fucking gas station at gunpoint. And then, like, the, the, that's why the cop asked her, like, if she had a gun in the bag. Because he's, like, looking at her like, damn, this bitch kind of fits the description of the call we just got. She robbed the fucking gas station. And then came into court and held him up. And because of her, I feel like they took it out on me. I feel like I yeah. probably could have. Because I got a smooth tongue, dude. I could have finagled my way out of it if this bitch. But you can't follow that. No, you can't follow on-site robbery. No. But whatever, dude. I just told that story until you got back. I don't really have a whole lot else to say. Like, I really wanted to do this podcast so we could talk about the Asheville thing because this motherfucker's really pissed me off. But we're in a position now. I'm off Saturday, no shows. Uh, so we should be able to film another one Saturday night. So we can for sure get two weeks in a row for you guys. Um, we'll be back. I think I'm off next weekend. I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, but... Either way, we'll try to film another one so we can get at least three weekends in a row. We're going to try to be more consistent. I want to bring these back. It's not that we don't like doing them. I love doing them. It's just our schedules are conflicting now because he works during the week. I work on the weekends, and it's just like, you know what I mean? Uh, But we do enjoy these. Apparently, some of you guys enjoy them because people have been asking, and that's cool. So we appreciate that. We appreciate everybody watching. Um, Got anything you'd like to add? I don't think so. That Jack got you fucked up, didn't it? Yeah, yes, sir. You want to go uh, smoke that blunt from that dude in Atlanta? Okay. Yeah, I do. Actually, I do. We'll go do that. Just like this. <laughs> Just like this. Oh, I do want to say this. I want to say this. And this is for the women. Comment your answer to this. Because I really want to know. Because there's a double standard here. Because women, no matter what they do, no matter what they wear, women are going to be approached by men. Right. A woman will get approached by a man a thousand times quicker than a dude will be approached by a female. Right? And it doesn't matter right. what they're wearing. Just it's just it's just how it is, right? 
I, I yeah. can post a picture of Kayla, and it's just like dudes in the kind of like, tits, 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 whatever. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. I don't give a fuck. She don't give a fuck. Who gives a fuck? You know what I'm saying? Because that's just life. But now listen to this. We went to Destin, and we rented a boat. We rented a pontoon boat and went to Crab Island. Okay, it was like seven hundred fucking dollars for a day. We, me and Mike, swim, like swim to this fucking restaurant in the middle of this fucking piss, piss infested water. Yeah. Everyone's just pissing and shitting in this water. Everyone's drunk as fuck. We swim through the piss to this floating fucking restaurant. Pay a hundred and fifty dollars for four fucking cheeseburgers and a bag of fries and two canned drinks okay it took us 45 minutes to get it we have to sit out here and wade in the fucking water <laughs> while we're waiting on this fucking soggy ass cheeseburger that we spent 150 dollars on kayla's like a fucking 100 yards away on the pontoon boat with the kids like i guess watching us with binoculars these two sluts like swim up to us okay mike is a single man Okay, they swim up to us and they, they, they start talking to us. And I say, whoa, my wife's over there on the pontoon boat. But then like, I let them know I'm married. I say, like, is Mike's single man? He can talk to these bitches. Mike's talking to the bitches, right? What's wrong right. with that? But all Kayla sees is like these bitches talking to us. So I get these cheeseburgers. And then we have to swim back to the fucking pontoon boat. And we get up there and Kayla's so pissed. So pissed. <laughs> I mean, so pissed. And I'm like, what the fuck? And she's like, we, we just got to use these bitches. Who are these bitches in the water out here? I'm like, I don't know. I was like, I told them immediately that I was married. I didn't even fucking talk to them. I, was like, I didn't say nothing to these bitches. And she's like, <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck was I supposed to do when this bitch swam up? <laughs> fuck you, bitch. I'm married. And like, just fucking drown her in the water. Like, hey, Kyla, you see it? She can't breathe over here. You like it? What are you supposed to do? What are we supposed to do to make y'all happy? How do you handle these situations? What are we supposed to do? That's right. What do you think? Hey. Let I, us know. Yeah. I think that's... Let us know, bitches. The best option. Let us fucking know. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Beats me.